In this video, I'm going to show how to set up a shooting mechanic for a cannon. Before we get started, if you want, get a download of this project. It is available in my Spock package under Game Templates Shooting Range. It's currently on sale, so if you're thinking of getting it, now is a good time. And in that project, you'll find all the super units that I've created and also get a list of game templates, including this one. I'm constantly adding new content into that package. So if you think that it's going to be helpful for you, you can grab that. Now let's get started. So in the previous video, I showed the mechanic of setting up this Nerf gun. And there are two small mistakes that I did. So I'm going to go and fix those first. In the bullet graph, I used the transform point unit. And instead, I was supposed to use the transform, transform direction unit. The transform point unit actually works a little bit different and that's not what we're looking for. Now, the second rare is in the offset script. So inside here, when I was spawning the bullet, I was using the local scale. So if you scale the Nerf gun, the bullet is not gonna scale. So to scale it with the Nerf gun, I need to replace it with the lossy scale, which is using the global scale of the object. Now we're actually going to reuse most of the script for the cannon and I want to convert this spawn unit to a graph as well. So let's convert that and I'll call it spawn on mouse up graph. Click save. One change that we want to do here is to create an object variable for this graph so that we can change what we're spawning. So let's call the variable spawn object. Click add. It's going to be a game object and I want to look inside my assets for the bullet. So that's going to be the value that we're going to use for the gun. And now we can pass that in as the original. Now let's clean up our assets folder. So this is our prefab. We'll drop it at prefab and this is a graph. And now we can start with our shooting range for the cannon. So this is a quick scene setup that I did and I'm going to be using Kenny's assets in this video as well. And there's going to be a link in the description so I have a cannon and a cannonball. Let's first create the cannonball. Put that in the scene, reset it, and I want to scale it by 0.4. And let's create an empty parent. So the process is exactly the same as we did for the bullet. So let's call this a cannonball. And let's create a prefab from this cannonball. You can remove the cannon from the scene and start editing the prefab. For the prefab, we want to add a circle collider. This added the shape to fit the object better. And now let's add a rigid body 2D and a script. So we're going to use the bullet script for this one as well. So bullet graph. We can go into the edit graph and make sure we add all the object variables that we use here. So the only one we have is velocity and that one is vector three. And let's set the velocity speed to 30 for this one. So our cannonball is configured. We will modify that script a little bit later to add the power mechanic there. But now we're gonna go and create our cannon. So let's add the cannon to our scene. Reset the position. I want to rotate it by negative nine degrees on the Y axis and scale it down by 0.3. So that's close to what I want. Now let's put this cannon large game object into a parent. I like to do that so that my positions and rotations are at zeros and scales are at one for the default setting that I want for the cannon. And I will call this a cannon. The next step is to break this cannon large object up so that we can create a parent for the barrel as well. To separate them, you can right click and go under prefab on pack that's going to break up this game object and we can move the barrel outside of the cannon large and now they're both at the same level. The reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to rotate at the barrel and I'll need a parent object of this barrel to be centered at this point as well. The way that we can do that is by creating an empty object inside here and I'll call this barrel. Then I can bring it out here and that saves the position that we have here but the rotation and the scale, I want to set it back to one because the only thing that I want is that position. And now if we put this barrel one back inside here, selecting the barrel, rotating on the Z axis, give us the result that we're looking for. 
so all that extra configuration work that I had to do is because the original Canon was actually facing towards the camera. And I had to do all that work around to make sure that the objects that I'm going to be working with, all the rotations are at zeros and the scales are at ones. That way, anything that we create or spawn is not going to be affected by the original rotation and scale of our game object. To spawn the cannon when we want, I'll take a little bit different approach than I did in the previous video. And this one is probably easier to understand. So what I'm going to do is create an empty object inside the barrel. I'm going to call it spawn point and I will move this object to the point where I want the cannonball to be spawned. So this is about the spot where I want it to be. And inside here we can add the script machine and find that spawn on mouse down graph that we've created. Go to edit to add the variable that we need. So for object we'll need to add a spawn object variable. It's going to be a game object and we're looking for the cannonball prefab. So that's the object that we're going to be spawning. Everything else we can leave it as is. The last thing that we need to get our cannon to work as our nerf gun was working is to add rotation. So let's use the script machine. I'm going to use embedded here. And for this one, I'm going to add touch rotate. That's one of my Spock units, but I did show the alternative way instead of using the touch rotate in the previous video. So if you don't have Spock, you can use the graph that we created in the previous video. So let's position our cannon on the tower. So some like that. And we can test out what we have for it right now. So our rotation is working, our cannons are working. A couple of problems that we have is we want to probably limit the rotation of our cannon so it won't shoot inside of our tower and add the mechanic that will give us the ability of controlling the power of the cannon. Before we're going to add power to our cannon, let's add a limit for degree of movement for our cannon. So I'm going to go inside here where my touch rotate node is and I'm going to add a rotate limit node. Now this is also one of the units from my Spock package. So if you have the package you can use this. And in here we want to limit on the Z axis. And the limit that I want is from negative 10 degrees to 90 degrees. And that will create that limit for us. So now if we rotate cannon down you can see that it stops and it also stops at 90 degrees. So that's just a quick limit that we can use if we have the Spock package. Now let's create our power script. So I will create a new graph. I'll call it power graph. Save and let's go edit the graph. To control power I'm going to use a timer node. So let's add that. And I'm going to use the on mouse input. When it's down I'm going to start the timer. Duplicate that and on mouse up I'm going to pause the timer. The duration is set to one second so we can increase this to two seconds if we want our full power charge to take two seconds to load. And now let's create a variable. For this one I'm going to use a scene variable so I can access this variable from other graphs in my scene. I'll call the variable power and this is going to be a float. Let's drag it inside here. Hold Alt down to switch it to set variable. And I want to set the value on every tick. And for the value, I'm going to use elapsed percent. Now the value for elapsed percent goes from zero to one, and that will work perfectly for our power multiplication. So that's all I'm going to do for power control. And to use that power, we need to modify our bullet graph script. So let's go inside of our graphs, find the bullet graph. And in here, we want to multiply the velocity by the power before we pass it into direction. So let's go to scene variables, get our power variable. From velocity we'll add the multiply generic unit and connect it to the power and pass this value to the direction. Now this bullet graph is also used for our nerf gun and if we're going to leave it like that the graph for the nerf gun is going to break because we don't have a power scene variable in our nerf gun. What we can do to make this graph backwards compatible is enable the fallback on this get variable unit. When we enable fallback, we get a value that we want to use if there's no power variable. 
and the default value that we're going to use is float of 1, which is the maximum power. And adding just a little bit more to our graph, we made this graph backwards compatible as well. Now we can actually test out and see if we can control the power. So if I click and release without holding for too long, you can see that the cannonball is barely flying. If I click and hold it for a little bit longer, you can see that the cannon is flying further. Now let's add the visual for displaying how much power we're adding to the cannon. So I have some sprites, but for these sprites, I'm going to make some changes to it. So in the mesh type, I'm going to switch to full rect and the pivot, I'm going to switch it to the left side and I'll explain why I'm going to do that. Click apply and now we can add the error to our barrel. And let's add the full error as well. Reset the position of both of these and we can move it out, position it where we want the error to be at. Now let's select the empty error. And for this one, I'm going to set the default order layer to one because my background is at the order layer of zero. And for the full one, I'm going to set it to order layer two. The reason why I set the pivot to be on the left side is because I'm going to switch the draw mode to tiled. And now if I change the width, I can simulate a fill of this error. And if we had it at the center, it wouldn't give us this kind of effect. Now let's create a script that's going to be changing this width based on how much power the cannon is charged at. So I'm going to add a component, a script machine. Let's use an embedded graph. Click add it. And in here, I'm going to look for sprite, renderer, set size. This is a vector to input. So we'll create a vector two here. For the Y, I'm gonna pass the height that we have here. So 0.96. And for the X, the maximum width is 1.8. But we're gonna take the scene variable and multiply it by a scalar. And we're gonna set the B value to 1.8. Pass that as the X. And that's all we had to do to visually display the power charge. Let's click play and test it out. We start with zero power. And now if we hold it, you can see that it's charging up. And based on when we release it, we get the power that we're looking for. So that is the mechanic for shooting a cannon. In the next video, I'm gonna be creating the mechanic for shooting a bow. And be sure to click on the like button if you found the video helpful. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.